got some boat work going on here. That's a mechanic there. He's uh, the resident neighborhood mechanic. So anybody with an engine that might need something. Uh, oh, they put a new carburetor on there. That's the throttle cable. It's uh, like a cable that drops down into the top of there, which is interesting. So, see the spring and everything go. That's like an almost like an SU type uh, carburetor with a with like a almost like a piston thing that slides up and down. So we're putting a new piece of fishing line through there. I'll leave, it. leave it a little bit. Oh, okay, they tied a knot and then slide it in the side. I'll leave that little piston slider. There's a butterfly there too, but it's got that little slider there. I don't know what that does. I know on SU carburetors, they had uh, like a little slider type thing that went up and down. Uh, but that, but if you have butterfly, why would you need that? But maybe that's some kind of a float mechanism, uh, fuel flow control of some kind. Normally, you have enough uh, effect from the vacuum going into the engine to suck the uh, gasoline out of the tank and into the intake. But I don't know about this one. Pretty kind of unique. So he's threading that line through there. I got spring on there. Like that. That's it. Right there. Dropping that down in there. That's a knee heedle. It looks like a like a fuel metering knee heedle. So maybe that's how the throttle works. So, anyway, they're fixing this guy up with a new fancy carburetor. And again, I've never seen that style. I've just seen like a lawnmower style carburetor. Maybe this is better, or fancier. Maybe it's just a factory one that comes on the Lonson. I don't know. But anyway, they're going to fire it up. They're adjusting the idle also. Like a hot rod. 
when you start these, you want to get them on the compression stroke. So as you pull that out, you'll feel it getting tight or you feel it getting loose. If you don't get it on the compression stroke, you pull about halfway and that thing will yank right out of your hand. It like rips your fingers off. It hurts like hell. So you got to know how to start these things. And that little red switch on the side, that's a kill switch over there. That's an on-off uh, kill switch. It grounds the spark. I have diesel engines that I'm going to put in mine, so we don't have a spark. And so the way to kill it is just shut the air off. You, you, you know, close the biosensor fly on the carburetor. Or, uh, well, actually it's got fuel injection, so it'll have a throttle body with, with the fuel injection. Anyway, it looks like they're happy with how things are, so we move it back to over there, epoxying the holes. But we're waiting for the epoxy to dry, so we'll see. Again, this is the resident mechanic of the barangay or village here, or wherever this area is. I see him. He's here. He always comes right here, and you'll see the engines. You'll hear him starting up, and then he'll be uh, doing some kind of tweaking and getting them going, tuning them up. So we will be back with more from my paradise on the Italian Island, putting new carburetors on. Bye for now. Here's another moment we've all been waiting for, or maybe you could call it a milestone. But we are coating the inside with the thin epoxy mixture here. You make some paint lacquer thinner with uh, uh, epoxy and then you paint it on like a thin layer like this so you can see it all down there i'm making a bit of a mess here but anyway i need to get back to helping them because we got to get this stuff done before the epoxy gets too thick so and we do the inside first and then we do the uh, outside so we will be back with more of my paradise on battalion island we are epoxy in this baby by oh we'll put three coats on uh and i guess it dries in about an hour or so is what we've been told so we'll see if we can get all three on today and after that we maybe we sand some who knows we'll see but anyway we will be back with more epoxying the plywood and wood on the inside of the boat and then we do the outside and then we do the bottom so bye for now everybody we're mixing up the next batch of thinned epoxy to paint on the hull or actually we're doing the inside first so we get the uh, lacquer thinner and uh, two parts of epoxy and mix them all up and then we uh, slop it on you see how it turns gray like that I don't know if you can see close but see it's a thin coat of epoxy and then we'll have to sand this because it leaves a you know like a brushed texture but we got to put three coats on the third coat we're going to mix with white paint so it's going to come out looking white but the first two coats we're just using pure epoxy like that and it's going to kind of look gray so we've just taken apart these cross beams and they came apart relatively easily for being on the ground uh, which was kind of surprising uh, but uh, when they're in the ocean they should come apart easier because the holes are floating and you can maneuver the hole whatever way you want you get if not you don't have to pick up the hole it'll hopefully you don't have to pick up the hole but uh, anyway so this one's the next one you can see it's just bare wood right now and we're going to uh, uh, yeah I sanded this down to kind of smooth some of this out sand this down a little bit smooth things out uh, and then after that we slop it on and uh, we uh, also uh, we put two coats on we put one coat on and then then right and and by the time we get from the front of the boat painting to the back of the boat the front of the boats semi dry and you can slop a second coat on there so then we slop a second coat on and we do the inside first and then uh, later after the inside's all done and dried then we'll do the outside i guess is how it works so anyway we are epoxying the holes <laughs> uh, for the wood this this is a wood waterproofing and strengthening 
uh, process here. So this wood, you can see, if you stick your thumbnail in there, it'll it'll indent. So you, you know the wood's still soft. It's just plywood. It is Santa Clara marine plywood, but nonetheless, it's soft. Once you put the epoxy on there, also now like this here, it's hard. It's hard. So uh, that's what we're after: a hard, waterproof uh, interior and exterior. So we, like I said, took them apart. So this is basically what we have when we take them apart. We got the permanent one here and the permanent one back there. And then this one here, if I undo these two bolts and one bolt in there, uh, both of these come off. This one comes off and this one comes off. And then you're left with just basically the same thing here, just like a little short arm that sticks out uh, that's permanently attached to there. So, and this is a kind of like the sandwiching part here, so we will be back with more slopping on the epoxy waterproofing these bad boys bye for now everybody we now have the inside of hole two that's well i guess you call that hole a that's what we've been calling it and this is hole b and the center is hole c so anyway we got a and b hole uh with that first coat of epoxy on the inside, as you can see, it's just a gray coating. It's doing some bubbling, crystallizing looking stuff on the outside. I think that may just be the, uh, you know, the thinner kind of coming out of the epoxy, you know, separating. But you gotta wait till it's all dried. And then we can sand it and then uh, put another coat on after that. So we're, uh, we're getting there. Piece by piece, swath by swath, if that's what you call when you rub a paintbrush on something, a swath. I could be wrong. <laughs> but anyway, so that's all gray on the inside, the back, the up, uh, the inside of the inside of the back. We're trying to get every little hole and place where there could possibly be water getting, which under here, I don't, yeah, it's under there too, that's good. I also um, took a straw. You see the holes here? The hole. Well, here I'll show you a hole out here. It's easier to see. You see the hole there? Well, I want epoxy inside of those holes because when water gets inside of the wood, if it gets inside of the wood, it'll absorb, and then all that wood area there will start to soften and rot. So I took a straw, and you know how if you dip a straw in, into some something, put your finger on top and lift it up it doesn't that stuff doesn't drip, drip out so I took and did that and stuck the straw in there and then I blew the epoxy into there and then rubbed the straw all around on the inside hoping to coat inside that bolt hole and the epoxy should absorb into the wood so I'm gonna have to also re-drill these obviously because epoxy takes up space and those were those were tight uh, holes to begin with so I'm gonna have to re-drill those but at least Hopefully, the, where the area where it absorbed inside there uh, will still have some degree of, you know, water resistance. So that's my trick of the day for uh, putting epoxy inside of a drill hole. And these two, all these ones here, I did it. This one, I actually didn't do this one. I didn't do those two, but I need to. But we're out of epoxy, so we're gonna wait for the next go round, and then I'll be sure to. I'll probably just redo them all again uh, just to uh, miss or hit the spots that I may have missed because you have no idea because this one's like uh, three three two by fours thick that that drill hole is so it's four and a half inches long and it's uh, so you got to stick that straw inside there and uh, hopefully get enough epoxy in there that it'll do it the job so we We'll be back with more epoxying the holes. And we got, of course, we got to do the outside too. So we're not even halfway done. And then we got to do that boat there because not necessarily the inside painted part because it's been done, but the all the new bracing. We have to do that one uh, also. So we will continue to uh, bathe these holes and epoxy, and we'll be back with more. In my paradise on Italian Island. Bye for now.
We got uh, this all sanded down. We sanded all of these uh, little guys here. The nice thing about these is, you know, when boats go through the water, water, water usually splashes up from the bow. And if the wind blowing, it's blowing it into the hull or into you if you're sitting there. But with these uh, planing type hulls, the water just shoots out the side. It just shoots straight out the side. It's really cool. And nothing, you don't get any spray up on you. It just like shoots it out sideways like that. So uh, that's a real plus for me because... Uh, and the other boat that we rode in uh, that was a regular Costco boat, you went more than six miles per hour, eight. It was just water was just flying in your face and everywhere. <laughs> it's just a mess. Uh, so, yeah, so this thing here is uh, a lot better for that. And, of course, with the three holes here, uh, each one will be just shooting into each other. The, other, the water will meet in the middle somehow, some way and uh, which I don't know just yet but hopefully it won't create any splashing and of course we're going to have the net here I didn't show you guys the net did I let me show you this is just the uh, I'm kind of tossing around a few ideas for what kind of netting to put there uh, I don't know if you've seen like the black nylon strapped well it's black nylon basically this size but it's a heavy duty nylon with the life jacket place if you saw my uh video on custom life jackets that place there can make me a net out of that they've got the one inch wide and they got the half inch wide or three fourths inch wide something like that uh and they can sew a net for me from that so i may have that done or the other option is to use this see right here this net this is like a, some kind of a fish net of some sort, but it's pretty durable, and I don't know how strong, but if I put four layers of this, I would totally trust it. If I put one layer, I wouldn't trust it, <laughs> but I might could trust it because it's pretty heavy-duty stuff, see that? Pretty heavy nylon, and it's tough, and I can't rip it or tear it, you know, even if I, I tried, but... Uh, uh, four layers of, of that pulled really tight uh, might make a nice net between there and this one here will it'll do four layers well not quite it won't do four it's not wide enough to do four so I'm gonna have to uh, get some more of that that's just my initial trial sample piece that I had to see how it looked and and uh, if we could pull it tight enough I didn't really get the tight enough test done but uh, I will get that done. Uh, but we got to epoxy all this stuff first and paint it and all that. And then the last thing I do is figure out uh, how to put the nets on and uh, rig up, put the engine back in, rig up a throttle control of some sort that's not just a piece of fishing line tied to my toe or my finger. I pull my finger, or my fingers pull <laughs> the fishing line kind of a thing. Uh, but, uh, some kind of a, you know, like a throttle control that you can push and let go and it'll stay there and it'll pull it back and it'll, you know, slow down and push it forward and it'll go fa fast. But it's one that doesn't just go from fast, from idle to fast when you move that, that, that far. I'm going to have to be able to have a small diameter thing to, it'll still have the fishing line wrapped around like a bolt or something, a smooth uh, shaft, and uh, so that uh, throttle controls are gradual, very gradual, and not just uh, feast or famine kind of a thing. So, anyway, that is my rambling for this section of the video, <laughs> and I'm just waiting for the epoxy to dry, basically. You, you know the saying, waiting for paint to dry? Well, I'm waiting for epoxy to dry. And I think we're going to have to sand it, but it may take a day or so for this to dry. And look how weird crystallization. When you put it on thick, see that? It's, it's like a foaming crystallization kind of a thing that happens. But I think once it's hardened, then that's why you have to sand it because it's it's that rough texture. But right now it's sparkly. It looks like they put sparkles or like quartz. Uh, or diamonds, you, you know, some sparkly, you know, glitter, uh, you know, glitter type of a thing. 
in it. I don't know if you can see the sparkly glitter like look. I can see it, but I don't know if that camera really shows that. But anyway, this coat, this one here seems to be thicker. You can see, you can barely, you can't really see the wood through here hardly at all, except at a place like that. But the majority of, of it's really thick. So we mix this one a little thicker than the first hole, but I almost like the result of the first hole better. And we double layered it on the first hole. We put on one coat all the way through. And then by the time we got down to the end, we came back and this was dry enough to add a second coat on that hull over there. And we still have to uh, do this hull here, and I don't know why we're not doing it, but we need to get that done. So I'm going to go try to round up the, the boat builder guy and try to mix up a smaller batch and do that hull there. So we will be back with more epoxies. Our holes <laughs> bye for now all right everybody we're prepping the center hole now for the uh epoxy and this one we don't have to epoxy as much because it's already got paint and stuff so we're not epoxying where the paint is but where all the new raw wood is that's where we're going to uh epoxy the whole floorboard is uh new wood and all this cross beam supports and cross beams and all that stuff is uh, new wood too so we we're vacuuming all the sawdust out because we were sanding it and we throw sawdust everywhere yeah, so it throws sawdust everywhere so we're getting that all cleaned up yeah honey you sure you took out the filter you took the filter out of here? Huh? Yeah. Oh, open it up. There's no filter there. Okay, perfect. Good. Okay, so anyway, we're going to do this guy, and we'll be back with more. We'll get all three of these holes uh, epoxied uh, first coat today. And then tomorrow, they'll be ready for some sanding and uh, another coat. So hopefully sanding won't take too long. I don't know about that foamy bubble crystallization stuff, but I'm thinking it'll just sand away really fast and then we'll be uh, ready to slap on another coat. And hopefully it doesn't foam up like that, bubble like that, but we'll see. And then, anyway, and then the last coat of epoxy will have paint, so it, it'll be white. So I actually get to see the interior, how it's going to look when it's all white. It will be way bit better than what it looks now. So. We will be back with more prepping Hall C, the mothership for epoxy. Bye for now. So, hey, yeah, we're taking all these cross beams out too. See right here? All these guys. We have to take all these bolts out. These guys here. And then we're going to uh, put these up so they don't get lost. I don't know where I'm putting them, but I think in here. So I'll keep putting them in there for now and then uh, we'll pull these guys off so you'll see all the removable parts are going to be removed now so we've separated this hole you can see it's only got the little short arms sticking out those are the permanent ones this one when it's done it'll only have this short arm sticking out it goes out both sides there and the same in the back the exact same thing this short arm goes across all the way across and sticks out both sides and then these guys here get sandwiched both of the permanent for the uh when you're out out and about when you want it to be one boat not three so we're getting it done and we're going to be back with more from my paradise on italian island everybody's curious about the epoxy bye for now right, everybody next time you see this it's going to be gray on the inside There'll still be some pink because I don't know if we got enough epoxy here mixed to cover all the pink, but we probably will be slopping it everywhere. Uh, certainly the bottom, which is an additional 3 8 inch piece that I put in here. We filled it all the way to the back to the almost to the very toe. You can see the very tip there where it kind of ends right there. That's where the th three, that's where the hole's 3 4 inch thick now instead of 3 8 and um, so and then the only other thing we did on this hull was all the cross bracing and of course the the beam you know supports cross beam 
uh, support. So now you can kind of see how the boat is when it's separate. This hole here and its permanent pieces. This hole and its permanent uh, cross beams. And that hole and its permanent cross beams. And these are the removable ones. These are the mahogany ones that are just go between the holes. And this one actually goes through the hole and inside of the hole. Uh, these longer ones do. Same there. You got the two shorter ones at the back. You can see it laying on there. That one goes uh, just across the inside of the here. Uh, from this hole over to this hole. They're just sandwiched where this split seam is. And then the long ones go all the way from the center here all the way through there and all the way through over to the other side of that hole into a notch that's built for it to lock into there. And same, of course, there too. So anyway, we're going to get high on this uh, lacquer thing <laughs> and, just, and uh, slop it on. Uh, I'm going to take these nuts off of here because I don't want lacquer thing. I don't want to. Uh, this is the engine Oh, well, it I don't know if I want them on or not, on or off, because if they're on, that keeps it from getting in the threads, and if they're off, they can get in the threads, but then if they're on, they can, uh, still get in the threads, so, I don't know, maybe I'll take them off. And, we can, and then we'll have to just, as we screw on the bolt, it'll have to clear, clean out those threads if we get some in the threads. See, that's the thing. I don't want it in the threads. So I'll put them back here. Hopefully we don't lose any of these guys. I think they're all 3 8 inch bolts, just like mine. Just like the cross beams are. So things were just about ready. They just about got it all mixed up over there. So I'll get these off and out of the way. So we, we'll still slop a bunch of epoxy. Now all these, this motor mount is probably coming out. I don't think my diesel is going to line up with this, uh, these bolts. So we're going to have to somehow angle grind these bolts off and put new uh, wood across here. So anyway, cut them off. So we'll leave those off and while we... Uh, spray uh, while we uh, paint on the epoxy so we we're going to get down to business here paint on epoxy and we'll be back with more in my paradise and see how thin it is it looks like a watery kind of a muddy milky kind of a paste but it's surprising how much epoxy there is in there and when you paint that on uh, how well it it does so here we go she's putting on her ninja cloth I'm going ninja free, he's going ninja free, and we're going to town. Bye for now. We uh, got this center hole, uh, as you can see, uh, epoxied here, everywhere, that there's fresh wood, and then we slopped it on the pink paint too. Uh, but we're also uh, doing these uh, cross beams here, so that they, uh, uh, well, they need it. They all need it. So yeah, so the the removable cross beams were uh, putting it on. We need some more epoxy. We're going to mix up a little bit more. But you can see, this was a really thick mix, and I don't know that you should mix it that thick because it does weird foamy things. It like foams up, and I don't know. I don't think that's good. And neither does the boat building guy. He looked at that and said, I'm not going to mix it thick. And so this is a thin mixture here. And that was a fairly thin mixture there, but that's got a little bit of foaming. And this one, we'll see if it has any foaming at all. It was really thin, watery. But after you put on a few coats of uh, watery, uh, it starts to like thicken up. And I think watery is better than thick when you're putting this uh, epoxy on. So we'll see. We'll see how this one dries out because this one, like I said, was uh, very watery, about half the consistency of that one. That one was really thick, and when we put that out, right on, even I just thought and thought, wow, this is thick. And again, it's foaming up. See that? And 
we're gonna have to sand all that down so I don't know what that's gonna sand like if it just sands real quick and it's done deal and you got a nice thick coat of epoxy or if it's a pain in the ass and it's not gonna look good so we will tell you <laughs> as soon as we find out so then I gotta fix those runs on there and paint a few more so we got uh, two more cross beams to pour two and a half I got half of this one here and the bottoms will have to do t tomorrow uh, and uh, after everything dries so we will keep on keeping on and I got to do my straw trick on these hoes too where I fill my straw up with e epoxy and of course this would be need to lay horizontally or whatever the hole would be horizontal and then uh, dump that epoxy in there and kind of spin the straw around and slide it back and forth and kind of roll it around so it coats the inside of those holes with uh, epoxy. So we will be back with more. Sofo is mixing epoxy and i'm doing some video <laughs> and we are gonna finish this up it's about four o'clock so it's just about perfect timing as usual it seems to work out really well where we get finished with what we're doing right at five so we're almost there so we'll be back with more from my paradise on the tiny island man that's a lot of boxes bye for now